what if instead of you know letting employees use like chat gpt what if a company just said nope we're building our own super exclusive super smart ai just for us okay that's what we're diving into today right with this business insider article about amazon's very own in-house ai they're calling it cedric now before you think oh this is just amazon's version of chat gpt uh, the article makes it clear that Amazon is really pushing Cedric as like the safer option. They're even encouraging employees to use Cedric instead of those publicly available AI tools for anything sensitive, you know, confidential. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense if you think about it, like the security implications. Right. Like, remember all those stories about companies banning chat GPT outright because of data leaks? Amazon was one of them. And it's not hard to see why. If you've got thousands of employees, right, all feeding potentially confidential information into a publicly available AI, well, things could go wrong. Yeah. But by building their own AI, Amazon gets to control everything. The data, who has access, all of it. That's huge for a company like Amazon, sitting on as much information as they are. It's like they're building their own AI fortress completely separate from like the public versions. Exactly. And this article really hits hard on that whole internal use only thing with Cedric. I mean, they say it straight up. Cedric's output cannot be used outside of Amazon. And get this, yeah. unlike some of those public AIs, Cedric doesn't use data entered by Amazon employees to train its AI model. Oh, that's a big deal. We forget that with generative AI, data is everything. Right. It's what makes it work. But how those models get trained, what data they use it, can be a bit of a black box, especially for companies using it for you know sensitive stuff. Amazon avoids that whole mess with Cedric. Yeah, so to be sure our listener is following all this AI talk, can you explain what generative AI is and how it works? Sure, sure. Generative AI, think of it like, imagine a friend who can write a killer speech, right? Just from a few keywords. Okay. Generative AI is similar. It learns from tons of data, picking up patterns, figuring out how things relate. Then you give it a prompt and bam, it uses all that knowledge to make something new. Text, code, even images. So we're teaching computers to be creative. In a way, yeah. And the model we talk about, that's the AI's brain, basically, the algorithms that let it learn and you know generate all this stuff. Okay, that makes more sense. So going back to Cedric, this whole safer thing seems to be a big part of how Amazon's pitching it to their employees. The article calls Cedric your secure doc reading and writing companion. Almost like, you know, a friendly AI sidekick. Right, which is smart, especially when you look at their competition. Yeah. Like Microsoft is going all in on AI assistance. You know, Amazon can't just sit back. Makes sense. They're not just trying to avoid risk here. They want Cedric to make their people more productive and happier, maybe. Yeah, because nobody wants to be stuck doing boring tasks that, like, an AI could handle. Exactly. And when your employees have tools that make their jobs easier, help them get more done, that can really boost morale. That's a good point. The article even says that Amazon wants its people to be as productive as possible so they can, quote, better serve their customers. Mm. OK, but speaking of productivity, imagine being able to ask Cedric to like write a six page memo for you in seconds. The article says employees are using it for everything, summarizing meetings, prepping for presentations to executives, all sorts of things. And it gets even crazier. The article talks about how employees are using Cedric to like anticipate what a VP might think about a document, you know, before they even send it up the chain. Whoa, really? Yeah. It's like having an AI whisperer giving you real time feedback on your work. That's wild. Imagine how that could change things, like how executives make decisions. If everyone's using Cedric to refine their ideas, their presentations. Right. It could really streamline things, get rid of bottlenecks, could lead to better decisions even. It's like having, I don't know, a secret weapon for climbing that corporate ladder. Right. Although something tells me some executives might not be too thrilled about their employees having access to an AI that can basically read their minds, right? Yeah, that's true. It definitely brings up some interesting questions about like power dynamics, transparency in companies. It's true. If these AI tools like Cedric, if they actually catch on, it'll be interesting to see how companies adapt, how they communicate internally, you know, how they give feedback. It all comes back to this idea of companies building these AI fortresses, these tools, so powerful, they're keeping them all to themselves. So do you think this could become like a trend? Honestly, it's right. definitely possible. When you yeah. think about the upsides, better security, people getting more done, even happier employees, it's easy to see why other companies might try to copy Amazon. Especially these days, right? Everyone wants an edge. Exactly. Hmm. But 
there are some bigger things to think about here, too. Like what? Well, like, what if this leads to a kind of fragmentation of the AI industry as a whole? What do you mean? Well, right now we have a relatively open AI landscape, right? right? Companies like, say, OpenAI make their models available publicly. Right. But if companies start keeping their AI advancements secret, using them only internally, it could stifle innovation. It could make these powerful tools less accessible. So instead of a few big players leading the way in AI, we end up with all these little separate AI worlds. Exactly. And then you have to ask, who really benefits from AI then? How will this actually change the future of work? It's almost like we're about to see a new kind of digital divide where having access to the best AI is what gives you the advantage. That's a really good point. And it's something we really need to be thinking about seriously. Because it's not even just about which companies have the most data or the fastest algorithms anymore. Right, exactly. It's about making sure that everyone benefits from AI, that we don't end up in a world where only a select few have access to these incredibly powerful tools. 100%. So let's say all the really good AI is locked away, you know, hidden in these corporate vaults. What happens to, like, the average person? That is the million-dollar question, isn't it? Right. Because if getting your hands on advanced AI becomes something only big corporations can afford, well, it could make existing inequalities even worse. It's like a sci-fi movie, almost. The rich and powerful with their fancy AI and everyone else is just, like, left behind. It's a scary thought mm -hmm. and something we definitely want to avoid. And that's exactly why it's so important to be having these conversations, you know? to really think about the consequences of AI, both good and bad, to work towards a future where this technology is used ethically, responsibly. Absolutely. So where do we even go from here? Is Amazon like the beginning of something bigger? Are we going to see a ton of companies creating their own, you know, exclusive AI? I mean, it's definitely a possibility, yeah. especially with AI becoming so central to, well, everything in business. Right. We've already seen this huge increase in companies hiring AI experts, data scientists, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Creating their own AI tools. Well, it's the next logical step for a lot of these companies, especially yeah. the ones with the resources, the data to actually do it. And that makes you wonder, could this change? Like how we even think about work? Oh, absolutely. Imagine like every job, Every profession having its own super specialized AI right. trained on data just for that industry, able to do all these complex tasks. That's kind of, I don't know, exciting and scary at the same time. Right. There's so much potential there. I mean, think about the productivity, the creativity, even how much happier people could be in their jobs. Yeah. But then you have the other side of it. What happens to jobs as we know them? How do we make sure people have the skills for this new world? What about human expertise, you know? It's easy to picture AI taking over a lot of the stuff people do now, which frees us up for more, I don't know, creative stuff, strategy, things like that. Right. Yeah. But that also means we've got to adapt, right? How we train people, what we teach, it all has to change to keep up with AI. Totally. We need to be thinking about this now. Yeah. How do we prepare people not just to use AI, but to really thrive in a world where AI is everywhere? Exactly. It's not just about knowing how to use the tools. It's about critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, those uniquely human things that AI can't replicate. So it's a lot to unpack here. But one thing's for sure, AI isn't some far off thing anymore. It's here, it's now, at work, at home, everywhere. And with companies like Amazon pushing the limits of what AI can do, we've got to have these conversations. We have to explore both the amazing potential and, you know, the risks. Couldn't agree more. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I think the biggest thing for our listener to take away is this isn't just about Amazon or even about AI itself. It's a look into the future, a future that's being shaped right now where technology has the power to change everything. And the choices we're making right now, the things we're talking about, the questions we're asking, mm -hmm. They all matter. They'll determine what that future looks like. It's a future full of possibilities, and it's on all of us to make sure those possibilities lead to a better world for everybody. Well, that's all the time we have for today's Deep Dive. Thanks for listening.